Today on Bulls Talk, the Bulls devoured the Washington Wizards last night. Derrick Rose continues his insane MVP campaign, and the Chicago Bulls have a four-headed monster coming out of Chicago. You know what time it is. It's Bulls Talk on Pippin' Ain't Easy Radio Network. Welcome to Bulls Talk. Today we're talking about the Bulls and the Wizards. Bulls devoured the Wizards, absolutely mauled them last night. Derrick Rose was a highlight reel. Dream is what he was last night. He had some of the best plays I've seen all season out of any Bulls. Luol Deng remained on fire as well. So, I mean, it was just an absolutely awesome game. Plus, they've now won two straight road games, which is something that it's actually a real accomplishment in Chicago because the Bulls can't win on the road, but they're 2-0 on this five-game road trip. Next up, they play Atlanta on Wednesday, tomorrow. But talking about last night, the Wizards coming into the game, one of the worst teams in the NBA, but that was no reason to write them off because the Bulls always find a way to struggle against teams that aren't any good. But that wasn't the case last Bulls absolutely electric and it was another case where they were in an away arena because they were at the Verizon Center in Washington but it was like a home game because almost everybody was there to watch the Bulls and that was that was the case in Milwaukee on Saturday it was the case here it won't be the case these next three games I mean Atlanta fans are going to come out to see the Hawks Magic fans will see the Magic and the Heat fans will definitely come out to see the Heat but last night it was almost like a home game at the Ryzen Center, and some of the most amazing plays that I've seen all season. It was just Derrick Rose just absolutely making an MVP statement last night, especially with one of the plays that he had where he uh, stole the ball down the court, and instead of slamming it in, he passed it between his legs to Joakim Noah, who himself slammed it in. Well, here's the call from uh, Comcast Sportsnet Chicago. Of course, Derrick at Memphis, John at uh, Kentucky. It's not a good pass cross court like that. Oh, oh beautiful pass oh. by Rose to Noah. Had John Wall turning 360s. And that's why so many people feel like Derrick Rose could be the most valuable player in the league this season. So it was a Derrick Rose highlight fest last night is basically what it was. Because you had that play, you had another play where he uh, assisted Luol Dang on a slam dunk. Here's uh, that call. Called upon... In this kind of situation, when you have somebody like Rose, what a wow. nice job of playing the lane. And then the great pass yeah. to Dang. And he also had another play where he assisted Luol Dang on a uh, three-point play right before halftime. One second to go. Dang puts up the jumper and hits a three at the buzzer. Left alone in the corner. I mean, Derrick Rose was everywhere last night. He finished with 21 points. But Luol Dang also finished with 21 points here. He's continuing to be a force to be reckoned with here. He's finally coming into his own this season. And uh, Joakim Noah, again, he was insane. And uh, Carlos Boozer had a double-double. So, and Joakim Noah had a double-double of his own, too. He had 19 points and 11 rebounds. 11 rebounds last night for Joakim Noah. Again, he had a crazy night rebound. Plus, Brian Scalabrini came into the game last night. Much to the delight of the Bulls fans that came out to the Verizon Center. And uh, you could hear it in those calls, too, of the plays that the Bulls are making. It, to the unknowing ear, that would sound like a home game for the Bulls. So that, that also could be why there's this momentum on the road, is because the Bulls have this feeling of a home game, even when they're on the road, because the Bucks aren't that great. And it's not that far away from Chicago, which is why that game was more Bulls than Bucks in terms of fans. And then have Washington, who's just terrible. And nobody's going to come out to see them until they start to get good. I mean, coming out to see John Wall was a novelty at the beginning of the season because I'm pretty sure you can get Wizards tickets pretty cheap. But that novelty wore off, and there's no Gilbert Arenas to come see anymore. You know, so it's they're in rebuilding mode. Nobody likes to, Nobody likes to see a house being built. They just like to be in the house after it's built, and that's what Washington's going through. Nobody wants to come out and see the rebuilding process. They just want to see the results of the rebuilding process. So that's why the Bulls fans were out in droves last night in Washington. It was just an awesome night. 105-77, the Bulls pull one out against the Washington Wizards. Now next up, they have the Atlanta Hawks. And now, how it's shaping up in the Eastern Conference right now, 
is the Bulls, they gained more ground on the Heat last night. So they pulled within a half game of the Heat, and they're now two games in, uh, away from Boston because Boston also won last night. So that's how it's shaping up in the Eastern Conference right now. Boston is 43-15, and 15, Miami is 43-17, and 17, and then you have Chicago who's 41-17. and 17, So these next three games for the Bulls are going to be absolutely huge because they're not only against good teams, but Chicago at the end of this, at the, at the end of these three games, if things fall their way, especially with the last game being against Miami, things going the way they can go, the Bulls might be looking at first place in the Eastern Conference come Monday. A lot of things have to happen. You know, Boston needs to lose two games, and then you need the Miami Heat not only to keep losing, but lose to the Bulls on Sunday, which is going to be a really great game. So, not to get too excited yet, but come Monday, we could be looking at a first-place Bulls team in the Eastern Conference, which would be absolutely amazing to see. Another thing I wanted to touch on is there's this big thing where in the NBA it seemed like this past decade, and especially last offseason, that everybody wants a big three. Every to, need, to win a championship, you need a big three. Because you look at L.A., the Lakers have a big three. The most famous example of this and where the term big three was probably coined out of, or at least coined into the populace in a popular culture, is LeBron, Dwayne Wade, and Chris Bosh down in Miami. So everybody seems to think that if you have three all-stars, three superstars on your team, in your starting lineup, that a championship is almost guaranteed. But Miami's kind of proving that theory wrong by not being able to close at all against good teams and therefore having a terrible record against championship contenders. But the Bulls, they didn't get their big three that everybody... They didn't get a, they didn't get a sexy big three in terms of the media because they didn't get LeBron, they didn't get Bosh, they didn't get Dwayne Wade. But that's okay because... Everybody else can have a three-headed monster. The Bulls are just roaring to the top here with a four-headed beast that they have. It's with uh, Derek Rose, Lou Aldang, Joe Kim Noah, and Carlos Boozer. I mean, all four of those guys are going to be sole superstars on if they're on any other team in the NBA, especially a struggling NBA team. If you put them, like in Washington, for example, if you put Lou Aldang on that team, a guy who kind of is like a, a lower option, in terms of people looking from the outside, looking in at Chicago, Lou Aldang isn't really a big popular name. You put him on the Washington Wizards, and he is a superstar in Washington. Same in Milwaukee. If you pair up uh, Boozer and Noah in, Wa in Milwaukee, they're a force all of a sudden. So, I mean, and then Derrick Rose, of, in of himself, any team he plays for, he's a superstar. Arguably, if he was in Miami, he would be fighting for who's the biggest superstar here. Because, I mean, he's... Topping the MVP lists all over the place. Everybody thinks he's the best player in the NBA this year. So, I mean, this four-headed monster coming out of Chicago is going to be way better than any three-headed monster somebody can bring together down in Miami, out in L.A., you know, now up in New York. You know, I guess you could maybe consider Chauncey Billups the third member of that uh, three-headed thing going on up there. You definitely have Carmelo Anthony and Amari Stoudemire. And come the off season, you know, maybe they'll be able to lure Chris Paul up there or something like that. They'll be able to get another three. But then there's another big three. It seems like they're franchising these big threes all over the place, but the Bulls have four. And they really only had to go out in free agency and get one of those players, Carlos Boozer. The other three they've had drafted and they've had on this team for a while and they've grown together. And I, to me, I think that's more valuable than going out and getting three free agents who haven't played with each other at all for two free agents if you're Miami, who have never played with each other at all, and trying to pair them up because it's going to be hard. I mean, eventually it'll get good. Eventually I can see that becoming something a force to be reckoned with, but there's baby steps, you know. It's in its infancy. It's not going to be an absolute power. Now, you look at the Bulls. They've been working on this for a while. You know, you had Noah, Dang, and Rose. They've been playing together for a couple years now. I think you insert Boozer into that, and then you just have an absolute beast of a team, a beast of a four-headed monster that you have coming out of Chicago. And I think that's more valuable than any big three. Because come as the playoffs start getting nearer and nearer, you're going to start hearing playoff matchups, who's going to match up against this big three. And, you know, over in the East, you're going to see all these matchups and everything. So it'll be very interesting to see. Big four, way more uh, valuable than a big three. So tomorrow on Bulls Talk, we're going to be breaking down the Atlanta Hawks game, which is going to be huge for the Bulls. And we also have a new contest to announce. It's from Chi-Town Clothing. Great shirts. Go check it out. 
we have a contest to announce with them tomorrow. Also, the Atlanta Hawks game we're breaking down. We'll get out of here for today, but we'll see you tomorrow. It's Bulls Talk on Pippin' Ain't Easy Radio Network. <laughs>